Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. I'm JJ Wang from Stanford University, and today I will be talking about our recent research on beer making in ancient China. My research interest in Asian alcohol making actually originated from an accidental discovery. So in Northern China, at the site of Mijaya, excavators discovered an interesting pit. The pit was about three meters deep and it has uh, three stairs leading down to the bottom. From the pit, archeologists found some pottery remains, which included a funnel, some wide mouth pots, some amphora, which, which had a really small uh, mouth and a pointed buttons, and a portable pottery stove. So the pottery assemblage suggested that some kinds of food processing activities took place at the site. But in the beginning, we had very little ideas. We knew that the pit dated to about 5,000 years ago, and the site belongs to the Yangshao culture. So previous research shows that the Yangshao people were millet farmers and they lived in sedentary villages. They also practiced some sort of uh, ritual activities, for example, uh, at the site of uh, Xishui Po, archaeologists have discovered a burial that, that would likely belong to a shaman. In this burial, the deceased person was buried with uh, shelled mosaics that represented a dragon, a tiger, and the Big Dipper. The findings of funnel and amphora is not a single occurrence. These vessels have been discovered in several other Yangshao culture sites, and most of the sites are located in the Yellow River Valley. An important question is, how did people use the amphora in the past? Usually, the popular interpretation was that the amphora was used as a water container. In many local museums in China, Educators demonstrated how those small pottery, small amphora, may be used for this function in the past. However, the interpretation becomes quite problematic as we found large amphora from the middle and late Yangshao periods. So here is a photo showing my colleagues holding those large vessels. It would have been really heavy for a Neolithic person to carry those containers to water sources and then carry those vessels back. By comparison with um, archaeological data from other parts of the world, we got some inspirations. In ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, amphora were frequently used as a storage vessels for alcoholic beverage, such as wine and beer. And here is a picture showing a person drinking beer from the amphora using a kind of a straw. And similarly, illustrations have been found in other artifacts. So based on this data, our hypothesis was that the amphora might have been used as a container for holding alcoholic beverages. And not just the amphora, the funnel is also likely a tool for alcohol making. In China, uh, funnels have been frequently used in breweries. For example, in this picture, the person was using a funnel to transfer some of the rice alcohol uh, from this big mouthed pot into the smaller pots for fermentation and long-term storage. So together with the ethnographic evidence, uh, we, we hypothesized that the pottery assemblage from the Mijaya pit was likely used for making alcohol, such as millet beer. To test our hypothesis, we went to the site's storage room and we extracted some residues from the pots, and then we analyzed the residues in our laboratory. Collaborating with undergraduate students at Stanford, we did a variety of beer brewing experiments so in the class called Archaeology of Food, uh, students used the different starchy cereals and tubers to brew beer. And after their experiments together, we analyzed the beer residues using microscopes. Based on our exper experiments, we found that 
the beer making process creates some specific damage patterns to starch granules. So in general, beer making involves two steps. The first step is sacrification. Enzymes convert starch granules into fermentable sugars. And the second step is fermentation. Uh, during this process, yeast converts uh, sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The process usually involves sprouting the cereal grains and low temperature cooking. And together, they created some characteristic damage pattern on the starch granules. Our findings indicate that the Yangshao people used many different ingredients to brew beer, including brewcorn millet, barley, job steers, and some kinds of tubers. Our chemical analysis also revealed evidence of oxalate, which is likely from calcium oxalate, known as the beer stone. Well, the beer we found inside of Mijaya is probably very different from the beer we buy in the stores today. Uh, first, the Mijaya beer had multiple ingredients, including both cereals and tubers. And second, it was most likely a slightly fermented porridge. Many starchy ingredients were not adequately fermented into alcohol, which left lots of starch residues for our analysis. Our findings also attracted some breweries um, from China and from US, and they created some beer based on the recipes we discovered. They also sent us some samples for taste. And I think the beer they recreated tastes really good. Uh, the beer tastes really fruity and sweet. Well, beer was not simply a drink. It also played a quite important social and political roles in the past and the present. So we are continuing doing our research on beer and alcohol making in ancient China and other world regions. If you are interested, please check out our, web, uh, our lab website, arcfoodways.com. Thank you so much for listening.